In the previous topics, we have talked about different components of pre-departure training. Uh, but what we are interested to know is that how much training is effective in this particular con uh, context. Uh, so this topic deals with the effectiveness of pre-departure training. Uh, the GMAC uh, survey asked firms to indicate the value of cross-cultural preparation for expatriate uh, success. Uh, we were in, they, they were interested to know um, how much uh, the training, the cross-cultural training, it contributes towards the successful performance of expatriates, and they measured it. Uh, they measured the cognitive, effective, and experiential cross-cultural training and language training provided by the company or self-initiated. So they uh, they uh, measured various different aspects of uh, the uh, of, of the training which was provided to people who are going on these expatriate assignments. Uh, what they found, the data shows that uh, you, you can see the results of 2011 and 2009 Brookfield survey. The, and on the column, you can see that the value of that was uh, given to the pre-departure training, the effectiveness of the pre-departure training, there were four categories for that. It is of great value, it is of high value, it is of neutral value, and of poor value. So the respondents, uh, which are the managers who are managing expatriates' performance, in 2011, they said that 25% of the managers said that it is of great value. In 2009, 19% said that it is of great value. The managers, they gave a high value to this uh, effectiveness of pre-departure training, which is 64% and 60% in both the surveys. So generally, we can see from this uh, table that uh, managers, they gave a high value or great value to the effectiveness of pre-departure training in the performance of people who were uh, sent on international assignments. So it means that it is something which is very much effective. However, uh, um, still um, it is considered that, uh, that the effectiveness is low. Um, uh, more effectiveness is required out, out of these programs. Uh, but there are certain reasons for, uh, for the low effectiveness of these programs. Uh, they, could be become, they could be made more effective. Um, wh what are the reasons of the low effectiveness? Number one is that there is limited data as few organizations they systematically evaluate. They don't evaluate the return on investment of the training which is provided to these international assignees. Uh, then there is a use of uh, a mixture of different training methods. Uh, different organizations, they use different training methods for pre-departure training or training of their international assignees. So it is difficult to compare that, okay, which program or which method is more uh, effective and therefore when data cannot be compared, it cannot be collaborated, then it is difficult to make a decision about the effectiveness of that particular mixed data. Uh, then there is a large diversity of cultures that expatriates face. So uh, it also depends on the culture in which the expatriates are going, how much that culture is receptive towards those expatriates, and therefore, um, uh, Training would be effective in a situation where the culture is also conducive. Is the, if the culture is not conducive, if the culture is not um, uh, receptive, then uh, the training may not be that effective. And then the interaction between the individual differences between expatriates and the work environment that they face. Uh, as every person is a different person and every person behaves in a different way, uh, so, because of these individual differences, a performance of people in the expatriate role that varies from, uh, from low to high. So, these are the various different reasons because of which uh, the effectiveness of the training programs is not that high, but it is something which is considered to be of great value and it is something which is um, uh, which is very much useful in making people adjusted to their international assignments.